This video will give you a brief introduction on pharmacology and the relationship between drugs and receptors. If you learn anything from this video, please hit the like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so this video can show up for more people. Thank you. In lay terms, pharmacology is simply the study of how drugs work in the body. It's divided into two parts pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic. Pharmacokinetics is what the body does to the drug and pharmacodynamic is what the drug does to the body. I will have separate videos for each of these so make sure to subscribe and turn on your bell notification so you don't miss it once I upload it. Let's start with the basics. First, drugs are substances that can be natural or synthetic. Natural meaning the ingredient in the drug that leads to the therapeutic effect comes from something natural like a plant for example synthetic meaning this ingredient was synthesized whether natural or synthetic all drugs are able to change the physiologic state or normal function of things in the body now drugs can be used for its medicinal benefits to treat diseases or for recreational purposes regardless drugs fundamentally work in a similar way Based on how the drug elicits its effect, it can be categorized as an agonist or antagonist. Now, it doesn't matter which category it falls in, all drugs interact with receptors. Receptors are simply proteins that receive chemical information, usually is located on the surface of the cells, and anything that binds and interacts with the receptor in its active site is a ligand or a substrate. After the interaction, things happen within the cell which will normally lead to a response. Let's put everything together. So let's assume the desired effect we want is anti-diarrheal. This can be achieved with an agonist or antagonist. Remember, there are natural hormones, molecules, or substances in our bodies that are responsible for many things. So in this case, we have drug A, and let's assume that it has been synthesized to look the same and act the same as a natural occurring hormone in your body that normally slows the GI motility. So drug A in this case will bind to receptor A. Any ligand or substrate that binds to receptor A and fits perfectly leads to slowing of the GI motility. This will lead to the anti-diarrheal effect we want. We can also achieve the same effect with the antagonist. In this case, we have hormone Z. In normal circumstances, when hormone Z interacts with receptor Z, it forms a complex and this will lead to increased GI motility. Since drug B is an antagonist, it will bind to receptor Z and block the active site and prevent hormone Z from interacting with receptor Z. So now, instead of promoting motility, the GI tract will slow down to help with the diarrhea. This is the general mechanism for most agonists and antagonists, but there are other types of agonists and antagonists that behave slightly different. Let's learn more about them. Full agonists are drugs that bind to the receptor and lead to a full complete response. Partial agonists are drugs that bind to the receptor but are unable to induce a maximal activation of the receptor, so it's only a partial response. They are useful for the treatment and avoidance of drug dependencies, as they induce a similar effect but less potent and addictive. A good example is buprenorphine. Next, we have the inverse agonist, which are drugs that bind to a receptor but induces the opposite effect. So they are kind of like antagonists, but they work directly on the receptor without blocking the action of a hormone or a substance to get the effect. This is something we see with the H1 antihistamines like diphenhydramine or loratadine. Irreversible agonists are drugs that bind to the receptor and lead to a full complete response. But normally, when a drug or ligand or a substrate binds to a receptor, it will leave after some time. Or if there is another drug or ligand or substrate with a higher effect, affinity for the receptor or high in concentration, it can possibly displace the initial drug. So with irreversible binding, the drug will not be influenced by anything and it will stay bound to the receptor. Selective agonists are drugs that bind to the receptor and lead to a full complete response. But it does this on a specific receptor. 
So one receptor can be present in different parts of the body. Let's assume an example of this is receptor A. And in this case, the drug interacted with receptor A, but the one that's specifically in the lungs and not in the kidneys or let's say the heart. For the antagonist, the first type is the competitive antagonist. So normally we have something in the body that binds to a receptor, forms a complex, and then a response. Then the antagonist comes in and blocks this interaction. In competitive antagonism, the name kind of gives it away, right? It's a competition. It's a competition between the hormone Z and drug B in this case. They want the same receptor. Now, even though it's a competition, if you increase the concentration of the drug, it will win and bind to the site instead of the hormone Z. For non-competitive antagonists, we have hormone X that normally binds to receptor X to form a complex and a response. In this case, the receptor has two sites, the active site that the hormone X binds to and an inactive site called the allosteric binding site. For non-competitive antagonism, the drug binds to the allosteric site, which will cause the shape of the active binding site to change. This will prevent hormone X from being able to bind to the active site because they don't match anymore. And that will bring this video to an end. Next video will be about pharmacokinetics. So make sure to look out for it by turning on your bell notification and so you could get an alert when I upload it. As always, show some love by liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment if the video was helpful. Also, follow me on Instagram at Pharmacist Academy. Thank you for watching this video and take care.